Hello and welcome back. Many of you have asked me a question. Can you actually use this encoder to thread on your CNC machine? I heard that question a lot of times. And actually, it was my question for a lot of time too. So here's the idea. You have the servo motor connected to your spindle and you want to read the speed and the position of the spindle. If you are using an usual AC motor, there is no question you have to use an external encoder. But having a servo motor like this, you could think that you don't have to have an external encoder. And this might be probably right. And today I'm going to check it out if that's true. If you don't know what's going on here, I recommend you to uh, watch two of my previous videos where I have talked a little bit about the UCCNC controller, which I'm using, the servo driver unit, which I have plugged in to some devices here, and the servo motor itself. This is the servo driver unit. We connect here the encoder of the servo motor, uh, the signal cables, the power of the motor, and the input power, 400 volts AC. But actually what is important today for us is this connector. Recently I soldered already some cables to this connector because when we get it from the factory there are not all pins which are needed. When it comes out of the factory there are only some pins uh, soldered and uh, some of them which could be useful for us uh, can be not connected from the factory and we have to solder them ourselves. Some of the pins are used for the encoder output we will use today. These six cables have all the signals we will need to use the encoder of our servo motor. I'm going to use the UC300 ETH CNC controller with this breakout board to connect with all the signals we have from the encoder. And in one of the previous videos, I have already wired these cables to the breakout board. In the spindle tab, the Z signal from the encoder connects with the index pin, which is the input number 8, in the first port. Encoder A pin is connected to input number 10 and the encoder B pin is connected to input number 9, both on port number 1. This encoder has a two and a half thousand pulses per revolution, which means that it generates two and a half pulses on each channel per one rotation of its shaft, which means that we get a total of 10,000 counts. So the main principle for most cases is that an encoder has the channel A and channel B. Our encoder produces two and a half pulses per revolution. So we get pulses per revolution multiplied by four to get the whole, the whole amount of counts per one revolution. So each of the channels has its states. It's the zero state, the one state, the zero state, the one state, and the same goes for the B channel. And now our controller can recognize the position depending on which uh, signal is turned on or turned off. This also is used to recognize uh, in which direction is the shaft turning. Both of the signals are phase shifted, which means one signal is shifted in time compared to the second signal. And this is cool because it raises the resolution of the encoder. So looking at the diagram, we get one state, which is uh, possible to recognize by the controller. It is 0A and 0B. Next, we have 0A and 1B, which is the second state, 1A, 1B. And the last state is 1A, 0B. And here we get back to the first state, which is 0B, 0A. So now our encoder has two and a half pulses per revolution 
multiplied by four possible states and we get 10,000 pulses actually counts per revolution and this is the value which we have to put in in our CNC controller. For example, if your encoder would have 100 pulses per revolution, then you would type in 400. Quite simple, right? And here it gets a little bit tricky because UCCNC accepts only 9999 counts per revolution. Nope, I'm not able to put in 10,000. The question is why? It's because it's impossible for the UCCNC controller to count so fast. For higher RPMs, there will be a really high frequency of the signal, which the controller wouldn't be able to read. Using a oscilloscope, I'm able to measure what frequencies are we getting. I've set this motor to work at about 850 rounds per minute and this is the signal we see on the encoder output. it worked to about 650 rounds per minute and we will check what will be the frequency. Six hundred sixty and that's 27 kilohertz per channel and this is about the maximum frequency which will be able to read by the CNC controller. One kilohertz on each channel. At this point, we could assume that it's not possible to use the encoder of the servo driver. But I have one idea. What if we could actually divide the frequency we get on the output and read it properly? I digged the internet and it seems that such electronic board should be able to divide the frequency we get on the input divided by a number which we could choose with the dip switches. So two words about the connection. This is a 5 volt output. I don't think we will need it. Uh, this is a power supply input. The dip switches. The manufacturer says that a binary code number coded into these dip switches is the number by which we are dividing the frequency of our signal. 10100000. Oh, 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 oh. It's one. Second is zero. And the rest is all zeros. Next here is the input of our signals which we want to divide. Here are some terminals which I actually don't know uh, what are used for, but I think those are not needed. And here is our output with the signals after dividing of the frequency.
Now let's see what we are going to see on the output of the frequency divider. 650 rounds per minute. Over 5 kilohertz on each channel. That looks like it's going to work with our CNC controller. Let's try some more speed. Two thousand five hundred rounds per minute, and that's about two one three seven kilohertz. So I think enough measuring and let's try if it actually works with our CNC controller. Okay, our mess is ready for testing. Let's take it for a ride. This looks promising. Let's try if we get the readout of 1000 when we start the motor. Yep, we get exactly the number which is seen on the servo driver. So many of you have asked if it's possible and I guess it is possible but depending on what servo driver you have you might need a device like this one to divide the frequency which you are getting on the output of your servo driver. Some of the servo drivers have already something like that built in and you can divide the output frequency just by setting up the right parameter on the servo driver but if your servo driver don't have such possibility like mine, then I think with such board you are ready to go. If you ask for the index signal, I have connected it uh, straight from the servo driver to the CNC controller. The Z signal is always once per one revolution, so there is no need to divide any frequency. So if this video helped you at least a little bit, thumbs up. If you like more such content like that, Feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.